Book 3. Knowledge. Number 56. Narrated Abu Huraira. While the Prophet was saying something in a gathering, a Bedouin came and asked him, When would the hour, doomsday, take place? Allah's Apostle continued his talk, so some people said that Allah's Apostle had heard the question but did not like what that Bedouin had asked. Some of them said that Allah's Apostle had not heard it. When the Prophet finished his speech, he said, Where is the questioner who inquired about the hour, doomsday? The Bedouin said, I am here, O Allah's Apostle. Then the Prophet said, When honesty is lost, then wait for the hour, doomsday. The Bedouin said, How will that be lost? The Prophet said, When the power or authority comes in the hands of unfit persons, then wait for the hour, doomsday. Number 57. Narrated Abdullah bin Amr, once the Prophet remained behind us in a journey. He joined us while we were performing ablution for the prayer which was overdue. We were just passing wet hands over our feet and not washing them properly. So the Prophet addressed us in a loud voice and said twice or thrice, Save your heels from the fire. Number 58. Narrated Ibn Umar, Allah's Apostle said, Amongst the trees there is a tree the leaves of which do not fall, and is like a Muslim. Tell me the name of that tree. Everybody started thinking about the trees of the desert areas, and I thought of the date palm tree but felt shy to answer the others, then asked, What is that tree, O Allah's Apostle? He replied, It is the date palm tree. Number 59. Narrated Ibn Umar. The Prophet said, Amongst the trees there is a tree, the leaves of which do not fall and is like a Muslim. Tell me the name of that tree. Everybody started thinking about the trees of the desert areas, and I thought of the date palm tree. The others then asked, Please inform us, what is that tree, O Allah's Apostle? He replied, It is the date palm tree. Number 60 to number 62, same as above hadith number 59. Number 63. Narrated Anas bin Malik, While we were sitting with the Prophet in the mosque, a man came riding on a camel. He made his camel kneel down in the mosque, tied its foreleg, and then said, Who amongst you is Muhammad? Peace be upon him. At that time, the Prophet was sitting amongst us, his companions leaning on his arm. We replied, The white man reclining on his arm. The man then addressed him, O son of Abdul Muttalib. The Prophet said, I am here to answer your questions. The man said to the Prophet, I want to ask you something and will be hard in questioning, so do not get angry. The Prophet said, Ask whatever you want. The man said, I ask you by your Lord and the Lord of those who were before you, has Allah sent you as an apostle to all the mankind? The Prophet replied, By Allah, yes. The man further said, I ask you by Allah, has Allah ordered you to offer five prayers in a day and night, twenty-four hours? He replied, By Allah, yes. The man further said, I ask you by Allah, has Allah ordered you to observe fasts during this month of the year, that is, Ramadan? He replied, By Allah, yes. The man further said, I ask you by Allah, has Allah ordered you to take zakah, obligatory charity, from our rich people and distribute it amongst our poor people? The Prophet replied, By Allah, yes. Thereupon that man said, I have believed in all that with which you have been sent, and I have been sent by my people as a messenger, and I am Dimam bin Thalaba from the brothers of Bani Sa'ad bin Bakr. Number 64. Narrated Abdullah bin Abbas. Once Allah's apostle gave a letter to a person and ordered him to go and deliver it to the governor of Bahrain. He did so, and the governor of Bahrain sent it to the Khusros, who read that letter and then tore it to pieces. The sub-narrator, Ibn Shahab, thinks that Ibn al-Musayyib said that Allah's Apostle invoked Allah against them, saying, May Allah tear them into pieces and disperse them all totally. Number 65. Narrated Anas bin Malik. Once the Prophet wrote a letter or had an idea of writing a letter, the Prophet was told that they, rulers, would not read letters unless they were sealed. So the Prophet got a silver ring made with... Muhammad, Allah's apostle, engraved on it, as if I were just observing its white glitter in the hand of the Prophet. Number 66. Narrated Abu Bakr al-Layti. While Allah's apostle was sitting in the mosque with some people, 
three men came. Two of them came in front of Allah's Apostle and the third one went away. The two persons kept on standing before Allah's Apostle for a while and then one of them found a place in the circle and sat there while the other sat behind the gathering and the third one went away. When Allah's Apostle finished his preaching, he said, Shall I tell you about these three persons? One of them betook himself to Allah, so Allah took him into his grace and mercy and accommodated him. The second felt shy from Allah, so Allah sheltered him in his mercy and did not punish him. While the third turned his face from Allah and went away, so Allah turned his face from him likewise. Number 67 Narrated Abdurrahman bin Abi Bakr's father Once the Prophet was riding his camel and a man was holding his rein. The Prophet asked, What is the day today? We kept quiet, thinking that he might give that day another name. He said, Isn't it the day of Nahr, slaughtering of the animals of sacrifice? We replied, Yes. He further asked, Which month is this? We again kept quiet, thinking that he might give it another name. Then he said, Isn't it the month of Dhul Hijjah? We replied, Yes. He said, Verily, your blood, property, and honor are sacred to one another, that is, Muslims, like the sanctity of this day of yours, in this month of yours, and in this city of yours. It is incumbent upon those who are present to inform those who are absent, because those who are absent might comprehend what I have said better than the present audience. Number 68. Narrated Ibn Masud. The Prophet used to take care of us in preaching by selecting a suitable time so that we might not get bored. He abstained from pestering us with sermons and knowledge all the time. Number 69. Narrated Anas bin Malik. The Prophet said, Facilitate things to people concerning religious matters, and do not make it hard for them, and give them good tidings, and do not make them run away from Islam. Number 70. Narrated Abu Wail. Abdullah used to give a religious talk to the people on every Thursday. Once a man said, O oh, Abu Abdurrahman, by Allah, I wish if you could preach us daily. He replied, The only thing which prevents me from doing so is that I hate to bore you, and no doubt I take care of you in preaching by selecting a suitable time just as the Prophet used to do with us, for fear of making us bored. Number 71. Narrated Muawiyah, I heard Allah's Apostle saying, If Allah wants to do good to a person, He makes him comprehend the religion. I am just a distributor, but the grant is from Allah. And remember that this nation, true Muslims, will keep on following Allah's teaching strictly, and they will not be harmed by anyone going on a different path till Allah's order, Day of Judgment, is established. Number 72. Narrated Ibn Umar, we were with the Prophet, and a spadix of date palm tree was brought to him. On that he said, Amongst the trees, there is a tree which resembles a Muslim. I wanted to say that it was the date palm tree, but as I was the youngest of all of them, I kept quiet. Then the Prophet said, It is the date palm tree. Number 73. Narrated Abdullah bin Masood, the Prophet said, Do not wish to be like anyone except in two cases. The first is a person whom Allah has given wealth and he spends it righteously. The second is the one whom Allah has given wisdom, the Holy Quran, and he acts according to it and teaches it to others. Number 74. Narrated Ibn Abbas that he differed with Hur bin Qais bin Hisna al-Fazari regarding the companion of the Prophet Moses. Ibn Abbas said that he was Khadir. Meanwhile, Ubay bin Qab passed by them and Ibn Abbas called him saying, My friend, Hur, and I have differed regarding Moses' companion, whom Moses asked the way to meet. Have you heard the Prophet mentioning something about him? He said, Yes. I heard Allah's Apostle saying, While Moses was sitting in the company of some Israelites, a man came and asked him, Do you know anyone who is more learned than you? Moses replied, No. So Allah sent the divine inspiration to Moses. Yes, our slave Khadir is more learned than you. Moses asked Allah how to meet him, Khadir. So Allah made the fish as a sign for him and he was told that when the fish was lost, he should return to the place where he had lost it and there he would meet him, Al-Khadir. So Moses went on looking for the sign of the fish in the sea. The servant boy of Moses said to him, Do you remember when we betook ourselves to the rock? I indeed forgot the fish. None but Satan made me forget to remember it. On that, Moses said, 
That is what we have been seeking. So they went back, retracing their footsteps, and found Khadir. And what happened further to them is narrated in the Holy Quran by Allah. Number 75. Narrated Ibn Abbas, once the Prophet embraced me and said, O oh Allah, bestow on him the knowledge of the book. Quran. Number 76. Narrated Ibn Abbas, once I came riding a female donkey and had just attained the age of puberty. Allah's apostle was offering the prayer at Mina. There was no wall in front of him, and I passed in front of some of the row while they were offering their prayers. There I let the female donkey loose to graze and entered the row, and nobody objected to it. Number 77. Narrated Mahmud bin Rabia, when I was a boy of five, I remember, the Prophet took water from a bucket, used for getting water out of a well, with his mouth and threw it on my face. Number 78. Narrated Ibn Abbas that he differed with Hur bin Qais bin Hisna al-Fadari regarding the companion of the Prophet Moses. Meanwhile, Ubay bin Kaab passed by them and Ibn Abbas called him saying, My friend Hur and I have differed regarding Moses' companion whom Moses asked the way to meet. Have you heard Allah's Apostle mentioning something about him? Ubay bin Kaab said, Yes, I heard the Prophet mentioning something about him, saying, While Moses was sitting in the company of some Israelites, a man came and asked him, Do you know anyone who is more learned than you? Moses replied, No. So Allah sent the divine inspiration to Moses. Yes, our slave Khadir is more learned than you. Moses asked Allah how to meet him, Al-Khadir. So Allah made the fish a sign for him, and he was told when the fish was lost, he should return to the place where he had lost it, and there he would meet him, Al-Khadir. So Moses went on looking for the sign of the fish in the sea. The servant boy of Moses said, Do you remember when we betook ourselves to the rock? I indeed forgot the fish. None but Satan made me forget to remember it. On that, Moses said, that is what we have been seeking. So they went back retracing their footsteps and found Khadir. And what happened further about them is narrated in the Holy Quran by Allah. Number 79. Narrated Abu Musa, the Prophet said, The example of guidance and knowledge with which Allah has sent me is like abundant rain falling on the earth some of which was fertile soil that absorbed rainwater and brought forth vegetation and grass in abundance. And another portion of it was hard and held the rainwater, and Allah benefited the people with it, and they utilized it for drinking, making their animals drink from it, and for irrigation of the land for cultivation. And a portion of it was barren, which could neither hold the water nor bring forth vegetation. Then that land gave no benefits. The first is the example of the person who comprehends Allah's religion and gets benefit from the knowledge which Allah has revealed through me, the prophets, and learns and then teaches others. The last example is that of a person who does not care for it and does not take Allah's guidance revealed through me. He is like that barren land. Number 80. Narrated Anas, Allah's apostle said, From among the portents of the hour are the following. One, religious knowledge will be taken away by the death of religious learned men. Two, religious ignorance will prevail. Three, drinking of alcoholic drinks will be very common. Four, there will be prevalence of open, illegal sexual intercourse. Number 81. Narrated on us, I will narrate to you a ahadith and none other than I will tell you about after it. I heard Allah's Apostle saying, From among the portents of the hour are the following. 1. Religious knowledge will decrease by the death of religious learned men. 2. Religious ignorance will prevail. 3. There will be prevalence of open illegal sexual intercourse. 4. Women will increase in number and men will decrease in number, so much so that 50 women will be looked after by one man. Number 82. Narrated Ibn Umar. Allah's Apostle said, While I was sleeping, I saw that a cup full of milk was brought to me, and I drank my fill till I noticed the milk, its wetness coming out of my nails. Then I gave the remaining milk to Umar bin al-Khattab. The companions of the Prophet asked, What have you interpreted about this dream, O Allah's Apostle? He replied, It is religious knowledge. Number 83. Narrated Abdullah bin Amr bin al-As. 
Allah's apostle stopped for a while near the Jimr at Mina during his last Hajj for the people, and they were asking him questions. A man came and said, I forgot and got my head shaved before slaughtering the Hadi, sacrificing animal. The Prophet said, There's no harm. Go and do the slaughtering now. Then another person came and said, I forgot and slaughtered the camel before Rami, throwing of the pebbles at the Jamra. The Prophet said, Do the Rami now, and there's no harm. The narrator added, So on that day, when the Prophet was asked about anything, as regards the ceremonies of Hajj, performed before or after its due time, his reply was, Do it now, and there is no harm. Number 84 Narrated Ibn Abbas, somebody said to the Prophet during his last Hajj, I did the slaughtering before doing the Rami. The Prophet beckoned with his hand and said, There's no harm in that. Then another person said, I got my head shaved before offering the sacrifice. The Prophet beckoned with his hand saying, There's no harm in that. Number 85 Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet said, Religious knowledge will be taken away by the death of religious scholars. Ignorance in religion and afflictions will appear, and Hajj will increase. It was asked, What is Hajj, O Allah's Apostle? He replied by beckoning with his hand, indicating killing. Number 86 Narrated Asma I came to Aisha while she was praying and said to her, What has happened to the people? She pointed out towards the sky. I looked towards the mosque and saw the people offering the prayer. Aisha said, Subhanallah. I said to her, Is there a sign? She nodded with her head, meaning, Yes. I too then stood for the prayer of eclipse till I became nearly unconscious, and later on I poured water on my head. After the prayer, the Prophet praised and glorified Allah and then said, Just now at this place, I have seen what I have never seen before, including paradise and hell. No doubt it has been inspired to me that you will be put to trials in your graves, and these trials will be like the trials of Masih dajjal or nearly like it. The sub-narrator is not sure which expression Asma used. You will be asked, What do you know about this man, the Prophet Muhammad? Peace be upon him. Then the faithful believer, or Asma said a similar word, will reply, He is Muhammad. Allah's Apostle, who had come to us with clear evidences and guidance, and so we accepted his teachings and followed him. And he is Muhammad, peace be upon him. And he will repeat it thrice. Then the angels will say to him, Sleep in peace, as we have come to know that you were a faithful believer. On the other hand, a hypocrite or a doubtful person will reply, I do not know, but I heard the people saying something, and so I said it. The same. Number 87 Narrated Abu Jamrah, I was an interpreter between the people and Ibn Abbas. Once Ibn Abbas said that a delegation of the tribe of Abdul Qas came to the Prophet who asked them, Who are the people? That is you. Or who are the delegates? They replied, We are from the tribe of Rabia. Then the Prophet said to them, Welcome, O people. Or said, O delegation of Abdul Qas. Neither will you have disgrace, nor will you regret. They said, we have come to you from a distant place and there is the tribe of the infidels of Mudar intervening between you and us and we cannot come to you except in the sacred month. So please order us to do something good, religious deeds, and that we may also inform our people whom we have left behind at home and that we may enter paradise by acting on them. The Prophet ordered them to do four things and forbade them from four things. He ordered them to believe in Allah alone the Honorable, the Majestic, and said to them, Do you know what is meant by believing in Allah alone? They replied, Allah and His Apostle know better. Thereupon the Prophet said, That means to testify that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is His Apostle, to offer prayers perfectly, to pay zakah, to observe fasts during the month of Ramadan, and to pay al khumas one-fifth of the spoils of war to be given in Allah's cause. Then he forbade them four things, namely, Ad-Duba, Hantam, Muzaffat, and An-Nakir or Muqayyar. These were the names of pots in which alcoholic drinks used to be prepared. The Prophet further said, Memorize them, these instructions, and tell them to the people whom you have left behind. Number 88 Narrated Abdullah bin Abi Mulaika, Uqba bin Al-Harith said that he had married the daughter of Abi Ihab bin Aziz. Later on, a woman came to him and said, 
I have suckled, nursed Ukba and the woman whom he married, his wife at my breast. Ukba said to her, Neither I knew that you have suckled, nursed me, nor did you tell me. Then he rode over to see Allah's apostle at Medina and asked him about it. Allah's apostle said, How can you keep her as a wife when it has been said that she is your foster sister? Then Ukba divorced her and she married another man. Number 89. Narrated Umar. My Ansari neighbor from Bani Umayyah bin Zaid, who used to live at Awali al Madina and used to visit the Prophet by turns. He used to go one day and I another day. When I went, I used to bring the news of that day regarding the divine inspiration and other things, and when he went, he used to do the same for me. Once my Ansari friend, in his turn on returning from the Prophet, knocked violently at my door and asked if I was there. I became horrified and came out to him. He said, Today a great thing has happened. I then went to Hafsa and saw her weeping. I asked her, Did Allah's apostle divorce you all? She replied, I do not know. Then I entered upon the Prophet and said while standing, Have you divorced your wives? The Prophet replied in the negative. On that I said, Allahu Akbar. Allah is great. Number 90 Narrated Abu Masood al-Ansari, Once a man said to Allah's Apostle, O Allah's Apostle, I may not attend the compulsory congregational prayer because so-and-so, the Imam, prolongs the prayer when he leads us for it. The narrator added, I never saw the Prophet more furious in giving advice than he was on that day. The Prophet said, O people, some of you make others dislike good deeds, the prayers. So whoever leads the people in prayer should shorten it, because among them there are the sick, the weak, and the needy, having some work to do. Number 91. Narrated Zaid bin Khalid al-Juhani, a man asked the Prophet about the picking up of a luqata, fallen lost thing. The Prophet replied, Recognize and remember its tying material and its container, and make a public announcement about it for one year. Then, utilize it, but give it to its owner if he comes. Then the person asked about the lost camel. On that, the Prophet got angry, and his cheeks or his face became red, and he said, You have no concern with it, as it has its water container and its feet, and it will reach water, and eat the leaves of trees till its owner finds it. The man then asked about the lost sheep. The Prophet replied, It is either for you, for your brother, another person, or for the wolf. Number 92 Narrated Abu Musa, the Prophet was asked about things which he did not like. But when the questioners insisted, the Prophet got angry. He then said to the people, Ask me anything you like. A man asked, Who is my father? The Prophet replied, Your father is Hudafa. Then another man got up and said, Who is my father, O Allah's Apostle? He replied, Your father is Salim, Mola, the freed slave of Shaiba. So when Umar saw that the anger on the face of the Prophet, he said, O oh Allah's Apostle, we repent to Allah, our offending you. Number 93. Narrated Anas bin Malik. One day, Allah's Apostle came out before the people and, and Abdullah bin Hudafa stood up and asked him, Who is my father? The Prophet replied, Your father is Hudafa. The Prophet told them repeatedly in anger to ask him anything they liked. Omar knelt down before the Prophet and said thrice, We accept Allah as our Lord and Islam as our religion and Muhammad, peace be upon him, as our Prophet. After that, the Prophet became silent. Number 94. Narrated Anas, whenever the Prophet asked permission to enter, he knocked the door thrice with greeting and whenever he spoke a sentence, said a thing, he used to repeat it thrice. Number 95. Narrated Anas, whenever the Prophet spoke a sentence, said a thing, he used to repeat it thrice so that the people could understand it properly from him, and whenever he asked permission to enter, he knocked the door thrice with greeting. Number 96. Narrated Abdullah bin Amr. Once Allah's Apostle remained behind us in a journey. He joined us while we were performing ablution for the Asr prayer, which was overdue. We were just passing wet hands over our feet, not washing them properly. So the Prophet addressed us in a loud voice and said twice or thrice, Save your heels from the fire. Number 97. Narrated Abu Burda's father, Allah's Apostle said, Three persons will have a double reward. 
1. A person from the people of the scriptures who believed in his prophet, Jesus or Moses, and then believed in the prophet Muhammad, that is, has embraced Islam. 2. A slave who discharges his duties to Allah and his master. 3. A master of a woman slave, who teaches her good manners and educates her in the best possible way, the religion, and frees her and then marries her. Number 97G Narrated Ibn Abbas, once Allah's apostle came out while Bilal was accompanying him. He went towards the women, thinking they had not heard him, that is, his sermon. So he preached them and ordered them to pay alms. Hearing that, the women started giving alms. Some donated their earrings, some gave their rings, and Bilal was collecting them in the corner of his garment. Number 98 Narrated Abu Huraira, I said, O Allah's Apostle, who will be the luckiest person who will gain your intercession on the day of resurrection? Allah's Apostle said, O Abu Huraira, I have thought that none will ask me about it before you, as I know your longing for the learning of hadith. The luckiest person who will have my intercession on the day of resurrection will be the one who said sincerely from the bottom of his heart, None has the right to be worshipped but Allah. And Omar bin Abdul Aziz wrote to Abu Bakr bin Hazm, looking for the knowledge of hadith and get it written, as I am afraid that religious knowledge will vanish and the religious learned men will pass away, die. Do not accept anything save the hadith of the Prophet. Circulate knowledge and teach the ignorant, for knowledge does not vanquish except when it is kept secretly to oneself. Number 99 Narrated Abdullah ibn Dinar also narrates the same above-mentioned statement and has been narrated by Umar bin Abdul Aziz up to the religious scholar learned men will pass away, die. Number 100 Narrated Abdullah bin Amr bin Al-As I heard Allah's apostle saying, Allah does not take away the knowledge by taking it away from the hearts of the people, but takes it away by the death of the religious learned men till when none of the religious learned men remains. People will take as their leaders ignorant persons who then consulted will give their verdict without knowledge. So they will go astray and will lead the people astray. Number 101 Narrated Abu Sayyid al-Khudri Some women requested the Prophet to fix a day for them as the men were taking all his time. On that, he promised them one day for religious lessons and commandments. Once during such a lesson, the Prophet said, A woman whose three children die will be shielded by them from the hellfire. On that, a woman asked, If only two die? He replied, Even two will shield her from the hellfire. Number 102 Narrated Abu Sayyid al-Khudri, As above, the sub-narrators are different, Abu Huraira qualified the three children referred to in the above-mentioned hadith as not having reached the age of committing sins, that is, age of puberty. Number 103 Narrated Ibn Abu Mulaika, Whenever Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, heard anything which she did not understand, she used to ask again till she understood it completely. Aisha said, Once the Prophet said, Whoever will be called to account about his deeds on the day of resurrection will surely be punished. I said, Doesn't Allah say he surely will receive an easy reckoning? The Prophet replied, This means only the presentation of the accounts, but whoever will be argued about his account will certainly be ruined. Number 104 Narrated Sayyid Abu Shuraya said, When Amr bin Sayyid was sending the troops to Mecca to fight Abdullah bin Az-Zubair, he said to him, O chief, allow me to tell you what the Prophet said on the day following the conquests of Mecca. My ears heard and my heart comprehended, and I saw him with my own eyes when he said it. He glorified and praised Allah and then said, Allah and not the people has made Mecca a sanctuary. So anybody who has belief in Allah in the last day, that is a Muslim, should neither shed blood in it nor cut down its trees. If anybody argues that fighting is allowed in Mecca as Allah's apostle did fight in Mecca, tell him that Allah gave permission to his apostle, but he did not give it to you. The Prophet added, Allah allowed me only for a few hours on that day of the conquest, and today, Now its sanctity is the same, valid as it was before. So it is incumbent upon those who are present to convey it, this information, to those who are absent. Abu Shuraya was asked, what did Amr reply? He said, 
Amr said, O Abu Shuraya, I know better than you in this respect. Makkah does not give protection to one who disobeys Allah or runs after committing murder or theft and takes refuge in Makkah. Number 105. Narrated Abu Bakr. The Prophet said, No doubt your blood, property, the sub-narrator Muhammad thought that Abu Bakr had also mentioned, and your honor, chastity, are sacred to one another as is the sanctity of this day of yours in this month of yours. It is incumbent on those who are present to inform those who are absent. Muhammad the sub-narrator used to say, Allah's apostle told the truth. The Prophet repeated twice, No doubt, haven't I conveyed Allah's message to you? Number 106. Narrated Ali, the Prophet said, Do not tell a lie against me, for whoever tells a lie against me intentionally, then he will surely enter the hellfire. Number 107. Narrated Abdullah bin az -Zubair. I said to my father, I do not hear from you any narration, a hadith of Allah's apostle, as I hear his narrations from so-and-so. az -Zubair replied, I was always with him the Prophet, and I heard him saying, Whoever tells a lie against me intentionally, then surely let him occupy his seat in hellfire. Number 108. Narrated Anas. The fact which stops me from narrating a great number of ahadith to you is that the Prophet said, Whoever tells a lie against me intentionally, then surely let him occupy his seat in hellfire. Number 109. Narrated Salama. I heard the Prophet say, Whoever intentionally ascribes to me what I have not said, then surely let him occupy his seat in hellfire. Number 110. Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet said, Name yourselves with my name, use my name, but do not name yourselves with my kunya name, that is Abu Qasim. And whoever sees me in a dream, then surely he has seen me, for Satan cannot impersonate me. And whoever tells a lie against me intentionally, then surely let him occupy his seat in hellfire. Number 111. Narrated Ash-Sha'abi. Abu Juhayfa said, I asked Ali, Have you got any book which has been revealed to the Prophet apart from the Qur'an? Ali replied, No, except Allah's book or the power of understanding which has been bestowed by Allah upon a Muslim or what is written in this sheet of paper with me. Abu Juhayfa said, I asked, what is written in this sheet of paper? Ali replied, it deals with the diya, compensation, blood money, paid by the killer to the relatives of the victim, the ransom for the releasing of the captives from the hands of the enemies, and the law that no Muslim should be killed in Qisas, equality and punishment for the killing of a disbeliever. Number 112. Narrated Abu Huraira In the year of the conquest of Mecca, the tribe of Khuza killed a man from the tribe of Bani Lath in revenge for a killed person belonging to them. They informed the Prophet about it. So he rode his rahila, she camel, for riding and addressed the people saying, Allah held back the killing from Mecca. The sub-narrator is in doubt whether the Prophet said elephant or killing as the Arabic words standing for these words have great similarity in shape. But he, Allah, let his apostle and the believers overpower the infidels of Mecca. Beware, Mecca is a sanctuary. Verily, fighting in Mecca was not permitted for anyone before me, nor will it be permitted for anyone after me. It, war, in it was made legal for me for few hours or so on that day. No doubt it is at this moment a sanctuary. It is not allowed to uproot its thorny shrubs or to uproot its trees or to pick up its luqat fallen things, except by a person who will look for its owner, announce it publicly. And if somebody is killed, then his closest relative has the right to choose one of the two, the blood money, diya, or retaliation, having the killer killed. In the meantime, a man from Yemen came and said, O oh Allah's apostle, get that written for me. The Prophet ordered his companions to write that for him. Then a man from Quraysh said, Accept al-idkhir, a type of grass that has good smell, O Allah's Apostle, as we use it in our houses and graves. The Prophet said, Accept al idkhir al idkhir is allowed to be plucked. Number 113. Narrated Abu Huraira, There is none among the companions of the Prophet who has narrated more ahadith than I except Abdullah bin Amr bin al-As, who used to write them, and I never did the same. 
Number 114. Narrated Ubaidullah bin Abdullah. Ibn Abbas said, When the ailment of the Prophet became worse, he said, Bring for me writing paper, and I will write for you a statement after which you will not go astray. But Omar said, The Prophet is seriously ill, and we have got Allah's book with us, and that is sufficient for us. But the companions of the Prophet differed about this, and there was a hue and cry. On that, the Prophet said to them, Go away and leave me alone. It is not right that you should quarrel in front of me. Ibn Abbas came out saying, It was most unfortunate, a great disaster, that Allah's Apostle was prevented from writing that statement for them because of their disagreement and noise. Note, it is apparent from this ahadith that Ibn Abbas had witnessed the event and came out saying this statement. The truth is not so, for Ibn Abbas used to say this statement on narrating the ahadith and he had not witnessed the event personally. Number 115. Narrated Umm Salama. One night, Allah's Apostle got up and said, Subhanallah, how many afflictions have been descended tonight? And how many treasures have been disclosed? Go and wake the sleeping lady occupants of these dwellings, his wives, up for prayers. A well-dressed soul in this world may be naked in the hereafter. Number 116. Narrated Abdullah bin Umar, once the Prophet led us in the Isha prayer during the last days of his life, and after finishing it, the prayer with the Slim, he said, Do you realize the importance of this night? Nobody present on the surface of the earth tonight will be living after the completion of 100 years from this night. Number 117 Narrated Ibn Abbas, I stayed overnight in the house of my aunt Memuna bint al-Harith, the wife of the Prophet, while the Prophet was there with her during her night turn. The Prophet offered the Isha prayer in the mosque, returned home, and after having prayed for Raka, he slept. Later on, he got up at night and then asked whether the boy, or he used a similar word, had slept. Then he got up for the prayer, and I stood up by his left side, but he made me stand to his right, and offered five rakah, followed by two more rakah. Then he slept, and I heard him snoring, and then after a while, he left for the Fajr prayer. Number 118. Narrated Abu Huraira, people say that I have narrated many ahadith, the Prophet's narrations. Had it not been for two verses in the Qur'an, I would not have narrated a single ahadith, and the verses are, Verily those who conceal the clear sign and the guidance which we have sent down, up to, most merciful. And no doubt our muhajir, emigrant brothers, used to be busy in the market with their business, bargains, and our Ansari brothers used to be busy with their property, agriculture. But I, Abu Huraira, used to stick to Allah's apostle contented with what will fill my stomach, and I used to attend that which they used not to attend, and I used to memorize that which they used not to memorize. Number 119. Narrated Abu Huraira, I said to Allah's Apostle, I hear many narrations, a hadith from you, but I forget them. Allah's Apostle said, Spread your rida, garment. I did accordingly, and then he moved his hands as if filling them with something, and emptied them in my rida, and then said, Take and wrap this sheet over your body. I did it, and after that, I never forgot anything. Number 120. Narrated Ibrahim bin al mundir Ibn Abi Fudayk narrated the same as above, but added that the Prophet had moved his hands as if filling them with something, and then he emptied them in the rida of Abu Huraira. Number 121. Narrated Abu Huraira, I have memorized two kinds of knowledge from Allah's Apostle. I have propagated one of them to you, and if I propagated the second, then my pharynx, throat, would be cut, that is, killed. Number 122. Narrated Jarir, The Prophet said to me during Hajjat al wida Let the people keep quiet and listen. Then he said, addressing the people, Do not become infidels referred to disbelief, after me by striking the necks, cutting the throats of one another, killing each other. Number 124. Narrated Obey bin Kaab. The Prophet said, Once the Prophet Moses stood up and addressed Bani Israel. He was asked, Who is the most learned man amongst the people? He said, I am the most learned. Allah admonished Moses as he did not attribute absolute knowledge to him. Allah.
So Allah inspired to him, At the junction of the two seas, there is a slave amongst my slaves who is more learned than you. Moses said, O my Lord, how can I meet him? Allah said, Take a fish in a large basket and proceed, and you will find him at a place where you will lose the fish. So Moses set out along with his servant boy, Yusha bin Nuin, and carried a fish in a large basket till they reached a rock where they laid their heads, that is, lay down and slept. The fish came out of the basket and it took its way into the sea as in a tunnel. So it was an amazing thing for both Moses and his servant boy. They proceeded for the rest of that night and the following day. When the day broke, Moses said to his servant boy, Bring us our early meal. No doubt we have suffered much fatigue in this journey. Moses did not get tired till he passed the place about which he was told. There the servant boy told Moses, Do you remember when we betook ourselves to the rock? I indeed forgot the fish. Moses remarked, That is what we have been seeking. So they went back, retracing their footsteps, till they reached the rock. There they saw a man covered with a garment, or covering himself with his own garment. Moses greeted him. Al-Khadir replied, saying, How do people greet each other in your land? Moses said, I am Moses. He asked, The Moses of Bani Israel? Moses replied in the affirmative and added, May I follow you so that you teach me of that knowledge which you have been taught? Verily, you will not be able to remain patient with me, O Moses. I have some of the knowledge of Allah which he has taught me and which you do not know, while you have some knowledge which Allah has taught you which I do not know. Moses said, Allah willing, you will find me patient and I will not disobey you in aught. So both of them set out walking along the seashore as they did not have a boat. In the meantime, a boat passed by them and they requested the crew of the boat to take them on board. The crew recognized Al-Khadir and took them on board without fear. Then a sparrow came and stood on the edge of the boat and dipped its beak once or twice in the sea. Al-Khadir said, O Moses, my knowledge and your knowledge have not decreased Allah's knowledge except as much as this sparrow has decreased the water of the sea with its beak. Al-Khadir went to one of the planks of the boat and plucked it out. Moses said, These people gave us a free lift, but you have broken their boat and scuttled it so as to drown its people. Al-Khadir replied, Didn't I tell you that you will not be able to remain patient with me? Moses said, Call me not to account for what I forgot. The first excuse of Moses was that he had forgotten. Then they proceeded further and found a boy playing with other boys. Al-Khadir took hold of the boy's head from the top and plucked it out with his hands. That is, killed him. Moses said, Have you killed an innocent soul who has killed none? Al-Khadir replied, Did I not tell you that you cannot remain patient with me? Then they both proceeded till when they came to the people of a town. They asked them for food, but they refused to entertain them. Then they found there a wall on the point of collapsing. Al-Khadir repaired it with his own hands. Moses said, If you had wished, surely you could have taken wages for it. Al-Khadir replied, This is the parting between you and me. The Prophet added, May Allah be merciful to Moses. With that, he could have been more patient to learn more about his story with Al-Khadir. Number 125 Narrated Abu Musa, a man came to the Prophet and asked, O oh Allah's Apostle, what kind of fighting is in Allah's cause? I ask this, for some of us fight because of being enraged and angry, and some for the sake of his pride and haughtiness. The Prophet raised his head, as the questioner was standing, and said, he who fights so that Allah's word, Islam, should be superior, then he fights in Allah's cause. Number 126. Narrated Abdullah bin Amr. I saw the Prophet near the Jamra and the people were asking him questions about religious problems. A man asked, O oh Allah's apostle, I have slaughtered the hadi, animal, before doing the rami. The Prophet replied, Do the rami now and there is no harm. Another person asked, O Allah's apostle, I got my head shaved before slaughtering the animal. The Prophet replied, Do the slaughtering now and there is no harm. So on that day, when the Prophet was asked about anything as regards the ceremonies of Hajj performed before or after its due time, his reply was, Do it now and there is no harm. Number 127. Narrated Abdullah while I was going with the Prophet through the ruins of Medina and he was reclining on a date palm leaf stalk, some Jews passed by. Some of them said to the others, Ask him, the Prophet, about this spirit. 
Some of them said that they should not ask him that question, as he might give a reply which would displease them. But some of them insisted on asking. And so one of them stood up and asked, O oh, Abba Iqasim, what is this spirit? The Prophet remained quiet. I thought he was being inspired divinely, so I stayed till that state of the Prophet while being inspired was over. The Prophet then said, And they ask you, O Muhammad, concerning the Spirit. Say, The Spirit, its knowledge is with my Lord, and of knowledge you, mankind, have been given only a little. Number 128. Narrated Asfad. Ibn Azubair said to me, Aisha used to tell you secretly a number of things. What did she tell you about the Kaaba? I replied, She told me that once the Prophet said, O oh Aisha, had not your people been still close to the pre-Islamic period of ignorance, infidelity, I would have dismantled the Kaaba and would have made two doors in it, one for entrance and the other for exit. Later on, Ibn az zubad did the same. Number 129 Narrated Abu At-Tufel, the same above-mentioned statement of Ali. Number 130. Narrated Anas bin Malik. Once Muad was along with Allah's Apostle as a companion rider. Allah's Apostle said, O Muad bin Jabal. Muad replied, Labbaik and Saddaik, O Allah's Apostle. Again the Prophet said, O Muad. Muad said thrice, Labbaik and Saddaik, O Allah's Apostle. Allah's Apostle said, There is none who testifies sincerely that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and Muhammad is his apostle, except that Allah will save him from the hellfire. Muad said, O oh Allah's apostle, should I not inform the people about it so that they may have glad tidings? He replied, When the people hear about it, they will solely depend on it. Then Muad narrated the above-mentioned ahadith just before his death, being afraid of committing sin, by not telling the knowledge. Number 131 Narrated Anas, I was informed that the Prophet had said to Muad, Whosoever will meet Allah without associating anything in worship with him will go to paradise. Muad asked the Prophet, Should I not inform the people of this good news? The Prophet replied, No, I am afraid lest they should depend upon it absolutely. Number 132. Narrated Salama. Umm Salam came to Allah's Apostle and said, Verily, Allah is not shy of telling you the truth. Is it necessary for a woman to take a bath after she has a wet dream, nocturnal sexual discharge? The Prophet replied, Yes, if she notices a discharge. Umm Salama then covered her face and asked, O oh, Allah's Apostle, does a woman get a discharge? He replied, Yes, let your right hand be in dust. An Arabic expression you say to a person when you contradict his statement meaning, You will not achieve goodness. And that is why the son resembles his mother. Number 133. Narrated Abdullah bin Umar. Once Allah's Apostle said, Amongst the trees there is a tree, the leaves of which do not fall, and is like a Muslim. Tell me the name of that tree. Everybody started thinking about the trees of the desert areas, and I thought of the date palm tree, but felt shy to answer. The others asked, O oh, Allah's Apostle, inform us of it. He replied, It is the date palm tree. I told my father what had come to my mind, and on that he said, Had you said it, I would have preferred it to such and such a thing that I might possess. Number 134. Narrated Ali. I used to get the emotional urethral discharge frequently, so I requested Al-Miqdad to ask the Prophet about it. Al-Miqdad asked him and he replied, One has to perform ablution after it. Number 135. Narrated Nafi. Abdullah bin Umar said, A man got up in the mosque and said, O oh Allah's Apostle, at which place you order us that we should assume the ihram? Allah's Apostle replied, The residents of Medina should assure the ihram from Dil Hulefa, the people of Syria from Al Jufa, and the people of Najd from Qan. Ibn Umar further said, The people consider that Allah's Apostle had also said, The residents of Yemen should assume ihram from Yalamlam. Ibn Umar used to say, I do not remember whether Allah's Apostle had said the last statement or not. Number 136. Narrated Ibn Umar, A man asked the Prophet, What kinds of clothes should a muhrim, a Muslim intending to perform Umrah or Hajj, wear? He replied, He should not wear a shirt, a turban, trousers, a head cloak or garment scented with saffron or vars, kinds of perfumes. And if he has any slippers, then he can use khufs 
leather socks, but the socks should be cut short so as to make the ankles bare.